What is going on everyone? Lauren Sisler here with AL.com. Jim Dunaway with the Jocks Roundtable. We are hanging out at the Caliber Store. All sorts of great stuff here. You can check them out for all your hunting and fishing needs. And it is Rivalry Week. Rivalry Week. I can say it this week for Ooh. some reason. Was that right? That's rivalry. right. You got yeah. it. You know, AL.com, WJOX. We're not rivals. We've been working together on this all year long. But Alabama and Auburn, when they meet in football or any sport, Heads, butt, no love loss. And in this one, Alabama, according to Danny Sheridan, he tells us Alabama a 24 and a half point favorite. So you would think easy game for Alabama, not so fast. Pump them brakes. All right, we're going three and out. Okay, first down, Jimmy D. Alabama's greatest advantage in this football game. Uh, for me, it's just the offensive weapons they have. They have a huge advantage over Auburn in that department. Uh, starting with the receivers, if, if you look at, you know, whether it's Judy, whether it's Ruggs, Smith, uh, Waddle, keep going to Herb Smith, there's so many different guys that Alabama can distribute the football to with two at quarterback. It's impossible to cover all those guys. I think that's a huge advantage for Alabama, not just against Auburn, but against anybody in the country. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that one. The plethora of receivers, the guys that uh, Tua has to distribute the football. But the biggest thing in this is going to be keeping Tua healthy because I do imagine in this football game, this kind of matchup, they're not going to be able to let off the gas, especially with an Auburn team that has those bragging rights on the line. So you got to keep him healthy because I imagine we might see Tua going well into the fourth quarter in this one. Yeah, no brace last week, which was a step forward for Tua in that win over the Citadel. All right, let's do second down. What is Auburn's biggest advantage? I'm going to go special teams in this one. Auburn has been playing really well on special teams. Even against Liberty, they had the block punt in the first quarter. Jordan Peters, that was his third block punt of the season. They've been great on special teams and returning the ball at Ryan, with Ryan Davis. And their kicking game, Anders Carlson has been really stepping up. He had that career long or tie for career long at 53 yards. He was three for three against Liberty. So I think they got the advantage there. Okay, for me, it's nothing on the field. Follow me here. Auburn's advantage is they're the only team that comes into this year knowing that they can beat Alabama because a lot of these players did it last year. So Jarrett Stidham was the quarterback. He did it last year. Davis, the receiver, he did it last year. A lot of these guys did it last year. It's not at Jordan-Hare Stadium, so it's much tougher this year. But no team, not LSU, not Mississippi State, nobody else has what Auburn has in the bank. They did it last year. 60 minutes, one game. If you're going to upset Alabama, maybe these are the guys to do it because they did it last year. That's a good one, Jim. All right, we're going third down, and in this one, it is going to be the key matchup. What is the biggest key matchup you see in this football game that you're looking forward to most? Uh, I think you got to pressure to a tongue of if, uh, if the Auburn defensive line, which is their calling card, their big moment coming into the season was they were going to have one of the best D lines in the country. If they can't dial up pressure on Tua Tungavaloa, then they have no chance at winning this football game. If Tua has four seconds, five seconds to sit back there and find an open receiver, he's quick at the release, but it, those guys can't cover these receivers that long in the Auburn secondary. So they got to get to him and they got to get to him quick and they got to get to him often. Yeah, I'm going to add to that the O line for Alabama versus the D line for Auburn. I think that is a big key matchup here. And even Nick Saban said in his press conference last week, you can't blame the offensive line for everything. It's ball distribution. Some of the guys not being where they need to be quick enough. Tua Tongavaloa not releasing the ball quick enough. So I think that's a big area of concern for them and getting pressure. And obviously this defensive line that Auburn we've seen all season long has been able to pressure the quarterback. So I think that will be a big key matchup for them. All right, let's do Oops, I did it again. This week we are talking about things that are unresolved or issues coming into the season, things we thought either team had going for them and eh, not so much. For me, it is the kicking game and more specifically for Alabama, extra points. Ooh. Joseph Bulavas has missed five extra points. He missed two last week against the Citadel, two against LSU. That is a huge glaring issue for me. Special teams, come on guys, you got to get it right. Extra points are a gimme. Our, our listeners on the round table, 67% uh, actually say they would have prefer Alabama to go for two every time instead yeah. of trying to kick extra points. I think the Sabre metrics now sort of point in that direction for a lot of teams that it works out better to go for two. It has become a problem for Alabama. I think the one thing with Alabama that I, I, I was worried about coming into the season was losing a punter. Everyone talks place kicking. 
Uh, the punting is not what it used to be. You get spoiled with a guy like J.K. Scott. I thought, eh, you're not going to miss him that much. Boy, have you missed him. They don't punt a lot at Alabama, but when they have, it has not always been pretty. Okay, we'll go to the Auburn side of things. Third down conversion, a huge glaring issue for this team, and it's really been the Achilles heel of this team all season long. Struggle fest, third down, 2 of 12 against Liberty. Not good. Their percentage right now, they're only 34% on third down conversions, which ranks 113th in the nation. Two of, two of 12 against Liberty, that's not a big alarm because you win the game 53 nothing, right? But you were 3 of 13 against a like opponent you're playing this week against Georgia in a rivalry game. Right. 3 of 13 on third down conversion. That will lose you the football game in Tuscaloosa like it did in Athens if you do that again. Uh, for me and Auburn, one of the things I thought they were going to be better at this year was their front seven play. I thought that front seven would dominate against the run, against the pass. Uh, just would be a tremendous elite group down the stretch here. I think the struggles on offense has affected those defensive stars a lot. And I don't think you've gotten the A game from that Auburn front seven that we thought you were going to get after the Washington game in week one. Alabama's a 24 and a half point favorite according to Danny Sheridan here at AL.com. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say uh, Auburn makes a good showing early on in the end. It ends up being Alabama like everyone thinks it's going to be Alabama. I'll take the Crimson Tide 40 and Auburn 10 in this one. 40 to 10, Alabama over Auburn. And I'm not too far off on that. I do think that, again, this is 365 days worth of bragging rights. We know Alabama wants those bragging rights back. Right. They lost the state championship a year ago, and as you said, I think it's what's to be expected. But I don't think Auburn, they come in with a little bit of confidence coming off a huge shutout win over Liberty. Um, it's going to be a tough one. I think they're going to dominate at times, do some good things, hopefully into the third and fourth quarter, make it an interesting game. But I got Alabama winning this one 35-17. 35-17. So not a cover for you. Not You're a cover. inside the Danny Sheridan number. Uh, so I, I really think this could happen. If, if Auburn beat Alabama, Alabama still plays in the SEC championship game. They beat Georgia. They're still in the college football playoff. How ar ironic would it be two years in a row you lose this rivalry game in the state? But you could be national champion still. Pretty crazy. Rarely does it happen. It's been a fun year. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was a horrible handshake. Bye bye now. <laughs> this video was brought to you by Caliber, a luxury store in Homewood, Alabama that's reviving the finer things in hunting and fishing.